Does COVID or the COVID vaccine change your period? Hey friends, today I'm talking all about menstrual cycle changes and COVID. I am getting asked all the time if the COVID vaccine is causing a change in your period, or I'm hearing stories from everybody that they experience this. And I want to break it down today. First of all, I'm Natalie Crawford. I am a board certified OBGYN and infertility doctor in Austin, Texas. This channel exists to educate you about all things fertility and your body. So please subscribe if you'd like to follow along and learn more. I have a ton of videos on COVID, so please, this is not the only one. There's an entire playlist where you can go dive into things. Does the COVID vaccine cause female sterilization? No. What is the current recommendation on the COVID vaccine if you're trying to get pregnant or pregnant? Does COVID impact male infertility? Yes. Today, I'm not addressing does the COVID vaccine cause sterilization because I've already busted that myth extensively. However, I do want to address the one study that exists on COVID and what it does to your female hormones, to your HPO or hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis and your ovarian reserve. First of all, lots of you guys have been saying that your periods have been changed. I've been getting comments all over the place. There's Reddit forums, everybody's talking about it. To be honest, we don't have the study yet on the COVID vaccine, but we know that what the COVID vaccine does is it causes an immune response to make antibodies very similarly to how a COVID infection would in your body. And there is actually a study talking about COVID infection and what it does to your period. So this study is published in the journal of Reproductive Biology Medicine Online, and it is called Analysis of Sex Hormones and Menstruation in COVID-19 Women of Childbearing Age. So this is a report of women who got COVID and what happened to their sex hormones, their ovarian reserve, and their periods when and after the infection. So first of all, this is a retrospective study of women who were in China who got COVID infection. So it's not perspective. We didn't follow people in time. Obviously, this COVID happened, and now we had to backtrack with the studies that we could do. But it is cross-sectional. It took a snapshot of the population, and there are controls from reproductive-aged women. So in this study, we had 237 women who were evaluated and we have menstrual cycle data for about 177 of them. In order to be included in the study, you had to be between 18 to 45. You couldn't have a history of ovarian dysfunction, so low ovarian reserve or irregular periods, that would be excluded. And you can't have had a prior hysterectomy or had an ovary out in the past. So they tried to narrow down people to try to see if the COVID infection itself was causing these changes. So a few definitions that are important when you look at these cohort studies, one is what defines an abnormal menstrual cycle. So a seven day duration that was longer or shorter than the average of the prior six months was considered abnormal for menstrual cycle length. A decrease or an increase in the volume of menstrual blood flow was asked of the patient as compared to her previous cycles prior to infection. And a menstrual cycle disorder was new onset defined as three cycles that had abnormal patterns. The take home result from this study, there's a few big points. So one is that 28% of women, so one out of four women had a change in their menstrual cycle length. So whether it was shorter or longer, it was defined as a change from what it was before. And 25% of women women had a change in their menstrual cycle volume. And so what we're seeing is a quarter of all women who had a COVID infection had some change in their period pattern. In order to understand that better, sex hormones were evaluated as well. Why could this happen? So a couple different theories. One is that COVID, like other infections, can sometimes mess up your HPO axis. And what that means is your hormones start being secreted in abnormal patterns. This was a result in abnormal ovulation. We see this with extreme stress response. We also see it with other type of viral infections like hepatitis B and C. We also know that chronic stress, so women who maybe are more ill would get treatment. They might even get steroids and that can impact the HPO axis and ovulation that's well delineated. Other theories for COVID specifically, we know that COVID impacts with the ACE2 receptor. This is really common in the lungs and that's why it's mostly a lung infection. Well, there's also ACE2 receptors in the testes and spoiler alert, we do see male infertility in a drop in semen parameters with COVID infection. And there are some ACE2 receptors in the granulosa cells, 
or the cells that surround the ovary. And so the hypothesis is, is COVID infection changing the ovarian response to hormones or how the brain secretes the hormones? In this graph, what we are seeing is that the main concentrations of some of the sex hormones, FSH, LH, estrogen, testosterone, were marginally higher in both the mildly and the severe group than the controls. This was not statistically significant, but this could be representing a small ovarian dysfunction during the acute illness phase that will resolve over time. Another piece of the puzzle that everybody's really scared of is, is COVID causing a drop in your ovarian reserve? I've said over and over again that we don't have any evidence of this, and this study supports that statement. So AMH or anti-malarian hormone was checked in all women, and there was no change in AMH levels in people who had COVID or did not. So COVID is not getting into the ovary and dropping your ovarian reserve or causing you to go into menopause early. And some viruses could do that. A notable one is HIV. What does this leave us with? Why are we seeing menstrual cycle changes? What this means is that if a quarter of all women who get COVID have menstrual cycle changes, it is most likely from the cellular immunity response. So this means that it's that huge inflammatory response. And if you've had COVID, you've felt that, or if you got the vaccine and you had some of those systemic symptoms, fevers, chills, muscle aches, that is your body mounting an immunity. That response is impacting the period. And so in that response to that stressful situation, we are seeing a subsequent menstrual cycle change. This has been transient. So in this study, women were followed. If for one to two months, their periods returned to normal, there was not long-term abnormalities. And even in subgroup analysis, we did not see that women who had more severe disease were having more menstrual cycle changes than women with mild disease. So that makes us feel that it's not necessarily the treatment for COVID, but actually something about the immune response itself. Because the vaccine elicits the same immune response, again, it's an mRNA vaccine, it is not surprising that if a quarter of all women who got COVID had menstrual cycle changes, that that is a transient thing that could be seen from the vaccine as well. You should not be concerned if you get the vaccine that your ovarian reserve is going to be impacted or your future fertility. Certainly, if you have menstrual cycle changes, you're going to want to monitor that and you're going to want to make sure that this is not going to be something that persists or some new development. A limitation of the study is that these were not early follicular phase values of FSH and LH and estradiol. That would give us the most reassurance that this is not impacting ovulation. We do know that acute infection or stress can impact ovulation and it's transient and temporary, and that may be what we are seeing here. Although once in recovery, there was no long-term change to FSH, LH, E2, or AMH, making us feel more reassured that this is a temporary response to stress or an immune change. So this study is helping us say, again, there's no evidence to support that there's an impairment in fertility, ovarian reserve, or prolonged menstrual dysfunction in anybody who's had a COVID infection, and thus the COVID vaccine. The study is also telling us that menstrual cycle changes may occur in up to one-fourth of all women. And this is important because it's telling us that if you have a temporary lengthening or shortening of your menstrual cycle or a change in the volume, it should not last more than one or two cycles and should recover once you recover. If you have prolonged changes in your menstrual cycle, something else is going on and you should seek medical help. I hope this answers the question and helps clears up some of the fact of why a COVID infection may change your menstrual cycle pattern and then therefore why some women are reporting this after the COVID vaccine. Again, no impact on ovarian reserve. This was temporary and returned. So you should not be worried about your future fertility if you have a COVID infection or you get the COVID vaccine. Also important to know that anytime a high stress can be a situation where your brain may not send out an adequate amount of hormones to ovulate regularly. Having a COVID infection or living in a global pandemic would not be surprising if this was the case. We are also monitoring with the vaccine reporting system, the incidence of having menstrual cycle changes as well as other complications. And there have been a few cases, it's not tons, but we have had some cases is reported where women are reporting abnormal menstrual cycle changes after the vaccine, then I think that correlates with what we are seeing here. Likely, this is an immune response reaction. Maybe it's impacting the brain from stress or those granulosa cells from the ovaries, potentially causing some early follicular development and abnormal period patterns or abnormal bleeding just as a uterine response that is transient. You see a return to baseline in one to two cycles and you see no impact on ovarian reserve. For more information, you can always follow the As A Woman podcast for in-depth fertility related topics. And I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Thanks friends.